Hi guys, it's Rumi the math person, and today I'll be going over question number 322 on exam P of the SOA. So pause the video real quick and try to solve this problem yourself. Okay, so assuming that you solved the problem, or you tried the problem at least, let's just dive right into it. The delivery service owns two cars that consume 15 miles, 15 and 30 miles per gallon. Okay, so I'm going to assign the variable X to the first car. This is 15 miles per gallon. And I'm going to assign Y to the second car, and that goes 30 miles per gallon. Fuel costs $30, $30 per gallon. So fuel, and that costs $30 per gallon. On any given day, each car travels a number of miles that is independent of the other and is normally distributed. It's normally distributed with mean 25 and standard deviation 30 miles. So whenever I hear a word, the word normally distributed, I always think of the z-score and it usually does have something to do with the z-score. Okay, anyways, what we're trying to find, we're trying to find, calculate the probability that on any given business day, the total fuel cost, ooh, total fuel cost, so I'm going to put this in terms of cost, probably that x plus y will be less than 7. Okay, and the key thing you have to know about this problem is that you notice they ask you the probability in terms of cost, total cost, but every our initial information is in terms of miles, or our initial um, mean and standard deviation is in terms of miles. So we just have to convert all that into our cost in order to try to in order to figure this problem out. So right now we know that x is 15 miles 15 miles per gallon. Or I can also say x is is how much is it? So that's um, miles per gallon. Now I'm actually going to multiply by over, divide by three. So then the um, G's cancel out, and I get this is equal to 5 miles per $1, or per dollar, $1, yeah. And for Y, we can do the same, and that's one of the reasons why I wrote the variables like this, because for me, convergence are kind of tough, I don't know why, so I always like to visualize it by being able to physically cancel out, so I know if I'm multiplying or dividing. But anyways, so I'm just going to go 30 miles per gallon, and I'm going to multiply. I'm going to divide by the 3 so I can cancel out the grams and keep keep the dollars. So this is equal to 30 divided by 3, which is 10 miles per $1. Okay, okay. So And we also know that the, mu, the mean of x in terms of miles is equal to 25 miles. And we want to convert this into dollars, right? So in terms of dollar, oop, I don't know what I just did. In terms of dollar, we would have to divide, right? So we can cancel out the dollar. So the, I mean, we can cancel out the miles. So this ends up being 25 divided by 5, which is just $5. Yeah. And the mean of y miles mean of y in just general is 25 miles and we can just do the same thing we just did we want to cancel out the m's so we're going to divide instead so that's going to be 10 m per dollar so the, do um, the miles cancel out and it, you just divide across and you get 2.5 dollars right right okay but what we're trying to find is we're trying to find the mean of x plus y, the mean of total cost. So we have to add those two together. And we're going to get 5 plus 2.5, which is 7. So that's our mean. We also still need the standard deviation. So we can just do exactly what we just did with our mean, but with standard deviation instead. So our first standard deviation of x, it's going to be 3 miles, right? Or in terms of dollars, I have to divide so that we get five miles per dollar miles cancel out and you get three five dollars and for mu of y this is equal to also three miles and I just have to divide 10 m dollar and the miles cancel out and I get three over ten dollars and remember for again remember for standard deviation what we have to do is that 
we have to square it to bring it back up to, to bring it back so our standard deviation of x plus y is equal to the square root of this squared plus this squared so that's going to be 3 over 5 squared plus 3 over 10 squared yeah yeah following following okay okay good good so then that's going to be equal to 9 over 25 plus 9 over 100 and we can simplify this uh, or I can just leave it like this yeah yeah for sure so now we have everything we need to um, form our z score I'm gonna actually shift this way instead so then we can just say we can just assign um we can say the x plus y we're trying to find the probability that x plus y is less than seven right less than seven Ooh, okay okay so we can find the z score so we can say the x plus y minus the mean of x plus y over the standard deviation of x plus y is less than or equal to or less than seven minus the mean of x plus y over the standard deviation of x plus y okay and then we know that this side is just the z score because that's the definition of a z score is less than 7 minus the mean of the mean of x plus y we found right here to be oh i don't know why i just left that sorry about that is equal to 7.5 and the standard deviation is this whole stuff and let me yeah maybe i will simplify it 9 over 25 plus 9 over 100 is equal to the square root of 9 over 20 yeah square root of 9 over 20 and if I solve that problem out it, I'm gonna get 7 minus 7.5 divided by the square root of 9 over 20 okay okay so when I've typed it into the calculator, I got that the Z was, oh, oh no, oh no, that the Z was less than negative point zero, negative point seven four five three, and we have to look reference our Z table. So we find if this is zero, we're finding this value negative point seven four, and we're trying to find the the probability that z is less than so we're trying to find this probability right here so let me pull out my z table so all i have to do is go to negative 0.74 negative 0.74 so that's 0.2296 so the probability of right here is 0.2296 which is also equal to 0.23 answer number b Thank you guys so much. If you have any questions, feel free to comment them, comment them down below. Otherwise, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Bye!